your favorite asset class for the second half? For the second half of this year, so I would say equities are still okay, but I would expect a setback, say 5 to 8 percent, which I think would be healthy. Mm. I would love to, but I don't expect performance to double. So to have this 14 percent in S&P going to 28, no. Okay. I would love to, but I think there is some setback that could be healthy, and for us, that rather we would be a buying opportunity then. Hmm. What about for bonds? Is, is it still sort of a, a long duration sort of story that we could see? No, I think if you look at the shape of the curve, it, it doesn't make so much sense to be long duration, actually. I think you really need to take this into account. In terms of yields, we do expect the curve to flatten out over the next 12 months. I also do expect yields to go lower first if we talk about a re recession, but in 12 months we don't go for a long recession. It's a short recession given really the strong labor market having not such negative implications on the consumer. I think then yields could be a bit higher. So to give you a number, 10-year treasuries we could see at 4% in 12 months, so a bit higher as we are from here, mm -hmm. but would still be a positive return on the bond side. Yeah, well, so on, on that point, recently sovereigns have cheapened. I mean, the UK gilts are at 5%. Yeah. Credit's been expensive. So w w which one do you so prefer? So we do point? like, if you look short duration, sovereign bonds could look interesting. But also on the investment grade, we think it's interesting. If you also look at performance comparison to high yield, last year high yield did not drop more than investment grade. Normally it should. It has not. Yeah. Because of some, Normally it should. That's it a good should, point. But there was obviously some dislocation in the markets because investors need to readjust their duration. Yeah. Mm. And so now I think there's more opportunity in the investment grade if you are beyond that recession in territory. And high yield, I would look at a later stage, to be very honest. What do you say to the, those investors that are just piling money into these money market funds right now? I mean, is staying in cash still something that you think Yeah, is if you look at the return, right, it, it makes sense from my point of view. But I think you should use that market also to invest into growth areas. We have seen artificial intelligence really growing. Unfortunately, our growth forecast for the next years is a bit lower. So it's not recession and then a massive pushback to higher growth. In that sense, I think it's very important to identify the right themes. And I think you would be rewarded from a risk return perspective. And to always stay in money market probably doesn't make so much sense. So I would use dips in the market, really to take out of money market and go to your asset allocation and growth themes. Okay. And what part of EM? I take the e EM part of the conversation. How does that go into strategy in terms of buying the dips? What, what, what in EM would you buy? Yeah, it's still Southeast Asia we like. Okay. Um, you can always debate is China EM or not. By definition, it is. I wouldn't say no. I would say no, but mm -hmm. say we still like China if there's more stimulus coming. And now step by step we see that. But probably needs a triple R cut as well, which is now expected. Okay. But I think you need to see that first. And there's still some, some pessimism in the region, I sense. Mm. And for in order to see more money flows, I think you need a trigger, and that could be the case. Mm. But Asia, if you just look at China and India, it's more than 50% of growth next year in terms of global growth. And from that perspective, it reads, remains very, very interesting to look into that. Mm. You still have a preference for Europe, though. Um, at this we point. do have, yeah. uh, because I think there was a cyclical surprise. So one year back, it looked very bad in Europe, power, blackouts, whatever. Uh, I think that has not materialized. That's good news and looks also good for the next winter at this point in time. So cyclicality helps and China reopening helps. Interestingly, if you look at luxury stocks in Europe, everyone thought now China is coming and buying all of that stuff in Europe, but it has more happened from the US side, not so much from China. So there's if you look at flight data, it's not there yet, so it could come. But however, I think now the U.S. has also caught up in performance. So potential growth is still higher in the U.S. than Europe. That's mm. something we should not forget. Ten seconds or so, what do you think about Japan? I think it's a neutral for now. We need okay. to first see change in wide yield curve control and then probably look at that.